travel is more than just about getting from A to B. It's about gaining new perspectives, embracing fresh opportunities, and experiencing memorable moments. With a population of a billion and a land area of 10 million square kilometers, China has found the most efficient way of bringing its people closer together. It's called the high-speed rail. China today leads the high-speed rail revolution by constantly finding new ways to redefine the experience, exactly what they're doing with their latest trains. China has built more than 3,200 high-speed trains and over 35,000 kilometers of rail tracks. This has been made possible by a potent combination of steely determination and human ingenuity. But the high-speed rail builders of China are now facing their biggest challenge ever, another man-made structure, one that's over 2,000 years old the Great Wall of China. Over 20,000 tourists visit this ancient marvel each day. But unknown to many, beneath it sits a modern-day wonder. A hundred meters beneath the surface, the Badaling Station is on the beijing Jiangtiakou Line. Though just 174 kilometers long, this line travels over mountains, through tunnels underground, and across rivers. When completed, the Badaling Station will span 39,800 square meters. That's the combined area of five football pitches, all of it underground. This makes the Badaling Station the deepest high-speed rail station in China yet. It's also a smart station, utilizing cutting-edge technology to keep trains and commuters moving with clockwork efficiency and safety, and all completed in time for this international sporting event. The International Olympic Committee has the honor to announce the host city of the Olympic Winter Games 2022. Beijing! To efficiently facilitate the movement of athletes, officials, and visitors during the 2022 Winter Olympics, the Beijing Changtiaku Line will reduce travel time between three main game zones to under 50 minutes. The key to this efficiency is speed. I感觉二零二二年北京冬奥会对于我们来说非常期待，非常的骄傲，而且非常的自豪。这六个字是形容吧。在你的家门口比赛，那肯定非常自豪。咱怎么说叫天时地利人和嘛？现在有高铁之后
京张高铁它既是二零二二年冬奥会的保障线，它也是促进经济一体化发展的服务线，还是传承京张铁路百年历史的文化线。我们的这个新建京张高铁是从北京北站到张家口南站，全长约一百七十四公里，应该是从二零一六年呃上半年开始全面开工，应该是在冬奥会之前竣工通车。With an immovable barrier just above and working on a tight schedule, engineers must find a way to preserve this historic monument while constructing a modern marvel beneath it. To keep the Great Wall of China from collapsing, engineers use two tunneling methods, microblasting and sectional excavation. Microblasting allows engineers to confine damage to a localized diameter so impact of each blast can be controlled. It is a time-consuming process that requires debris to be removed after each blast. A second method, sectional excavation, is also used. Each tunnel is divided into 13 segments and each segment is dug with great caution to prevent erosion. After tunneling is completed in one section, reinforcement reels are secured to the soil before digging for the next segment commences. To dramatically reduce the amount of time needed for tunneling through mountains, high-speed rail builders go old school with a tried and tested shaft construction method. The shaft construction method requires the drilling of vertical shafts at two points set a distance apart on the face of the mountain. At the bottom of each shaft, tunnelers begin work in different directions. This process is done with great precision, so the individually excavated tunnels line up. This method was successfully used in the 1900s when a railroad was built through the mountains surrounding the Great Wall. The massive Bataling Tunnel Project runs 24-7 in eight-hour shifts. To keep on schedule, it employs over a thousand workers. Many of these workers have relocated from faraway hometowns to be closer to this site, and some have even brought their families with them. Thank those working on this project look upon it with pride. They see themselves as part of a history-making endeavor, an opportunity to contribute to the country's reputation and future. They're focused on a common goal, the successful completion of a modern-day marvel of engineering and technology, and the making of yet another universally recognized icon running across the expanse of the Chinese landscape. Railway tracks and tunnels need trains, lots of trains. Mega factories in Changchun and Qingdao produce thousands of these each year, for domestic and international markets. The latest version of the high-speed train being built is called the Fuxing Hao. The Fuxing Hao is 209 meters long and has capacity for 556 passengers with a choice of business, first and second class seating. As the Chinese landscape flashes by, inside, passengers are cocooned in a roomy cabin with comfy seats 
power outlet, and yes, the all-important free Wi-Fi, a luxurious ride they can enjoy in relative quiet. 启动复兴号的研发呢，主要是基于几方面的考虑嘛，一个是要实现那个动车组技术的自主化，呃，因为国家从零四年开始，呃，引进、消化、吸收，然后从国外引进了不同平台的动车组，不是我们自己的企业自主研发的，这样呢，在运用过程中呢，就会受到一些约束。In 2005. High-speed rail engineers set off on a mission to build a high-speed train that's 100% made in China. One of the key people involved in this project is Engineer Deng. I got to the train when I was learning the train. At that time, I was very stressed. Actually, first, we wanted to get the train done. We wanted to make a train that would suit our company's brand. So we thought, through the development of the train, 去把我们的运用这些经验，指导我们的设计，能够彻底去解决这些既有的平台动车运用的一些问题，能够更加好的适合中国的运用的环境。The latest Fuxing Hao is more comfortable, more efficient, and faster than previous high-speed trains. In fact, this is one of the fastest high-speed train in the world. The Sefang factory in Qingdao. This is one of three mega factories in China that build high-speed trains. This factory alone employs nearly 12,000 people, and this is where the latest model of high-speed train, the Fuxing Hao, is built. Over 900 Fuxing Hao's have been built to date. And with each new iteration, cutting-edge technology is used to make improvements to its design. Actually, we have the point of view of the fuel station. We have two points. From our current view, it's more efficient. 就是我们现在就是设计传感器的两千五百个点，这设计安全的地方都有传感器。Some 2,500 smart sensors placed along the length of each train monitor train operations, ambient temperatures, and braking systems to ensure passenger safety. Compared to its predecessor, the Hershey Hao, the Fuxing Hao's improved head design has made it more aerodynamic. The resulting 12% reduction in air resistance translates to 17% less energy consumed per 100 kilometers. And this means lower operating costs. Now, the whole world is talking about the health care. We have the health care and the health care. It isn't only these China-made high-speed trains that run efficiently. Even the process of designing these trains, from outer shell to interiors, is a model of cost-time efficiency. All thanks to technology that makes the imagined seem very real. This is the Sifang factory's cave system, a virtual reality room that helps greatly compress the design process for engineers to pick only the best solutions for the next phase of testing. I will usually design 20 new design models and then we will find 10 of the best aerodynamic performance to take the wind tunnel test and also the practical line test and then we will choose the best proposal with the best aerodynamic performance. Used since 2010, virtual reality technology has made spending valuable man hours painstakingly creating true to scale models obsolete. In the past, we have to build a concrete model to feel the color and the, the dimension of the train. It will cost us a lot of money and time. The digital model in this cave system are usually be built by full-scale, one-to-one ratio. Fuxing Hao is the cave system allows designers to spatially and aesthetically experience the designs and explore options quickly with a few computer keystrokes. 
But the ultimate test of a train's rideworthiness is real-life experience. To commuters, the hard work that goes on behind the scenes before these trains begin operating is transparent. All that matters is a smooth, safe, speedy and comfortable ride. at Southwest Jiaotong University, a research team is working to set new standards for comfort in high-speed rail travel. Gautier 它的氣壓波動狀態以及它的噪聲,還有它車廂內的溫濕度和噪度的變化. Professor Lin's team conducts a series of tests. Data collected from these tests is critical for creating the optimal conditions for passenger comfort. And they're doing it with the help of China's most famous critter, the beloved panda. Even with the introduction of the railway in China nearly a century and a half ago, traveling across its vast hinterland was arduous and time-consuming. The high-speed rail has changed this by figuratively compressing space and time and offering more comfort than was once even imagined. Using a high-tech train simulator, Professor Lin and his team are conducting experiments to test the physical and psychological effect of vibration, noise, air pressure, temperature and humidity on passengers. Unlike the established safety and comfort benchmarks of the aviation industry, the regulators of China's high-speed rail travel are still defining benchmarks for their industry, and they're determined to set the bar high. 坐高铁现在感觉会比飞机坐更舒服 from technical design to ergonomics, China is on a quest to perfect its 21st century symbol. But additional help is needed, even from some unexpected friends. Then It isn't just high-speed rail builders who conduct experiments on their trains. Videos of passengers putting the high-speed rail's reputed smooth ride to the test 
have been chalking up views on the internet. Coins balanced on windowsills of high-speed trains are seen to remain standing, even at 300 kilometers per hour. One secret of creating a ride this smooth while traveling at such speeds lies beneath the train. The deceivingly ordinary looking tracks these high-speed wonders run on. The Chinese have been using a method of making seamless rail tracks since the 1950s. Today, they're made in the steel factory 30 kilometers north of Beijing. Both ends of five 100-meter steel rail segments are heated up to 1,000 degrees Celsius, then welded into a seamless 500-meter long rail. Each segment is carefully inspected and tested for durability. Once approved, these segments are transported by rail, of course, to railway construction sites for installation. When finally laid out end to end, these 500 meter segments will form tracks with as few joints as possible. Less joints means less bumps, and less bumps mean a smoother ride. 4,500 trains run across these tracks every day. With such heavy usage, the wear and tear to tracks is something that's religiously monitored. While seemingly unglamorous, the work that goes on here is critical to the high-speed rail's continued success. In fact, the safety of 1.7 billion passengers who use it each year depends on it. To understand the effects of prolonged wear and tear on rail durability, Professor Song Li of Central South University artificially ages samples of track in the lab to better understand how acidity, heat, and vibration affect track integrity. So we use Outside the lab, over 35,000 kilometers of high-speed rail tracks are meticulously checked throughout the year. This is done manually, at night, in all kinds of weather, a task that must be completed in just four hours because the high-speed rail requires high-speed maintenance. As the last of China's high-speed trains rolls into the depot for the night, track maintenance crews prepare for an important activity, ensuring the tracks and other equipment are ship-shape. The safety of commuters is what's at stake, so there's nothing left to chance. The health and condition of cables supplying electricity to the high-speed rail and the tracks themselves are examined for defects. Every night throughout the year, maintenance teams across China conduct stringent checks on high-speed rail tracks. Every piece of equipment and every team member is accounted for before and after each shift. In the course of a year, each 18 to 20-man crew 
covers 150 of over 35,000 kilometers of high-speed rail tracks. It is a tedious process, but one that's absolutely necessary. Before maintenance can begin, power cables must be earthed to prevent fatalities. The entire process begins with the cutting off of the main power supply to the appropriate stretch of track. Then, crews earth the electricity on either end of the stretch. Not unlike sticking a test pen in a power socket, a high voltage detector is used to confirm there is no live electricity running in the cables. Only then can actual track maintenance take place. Meanwhile, the track team prepares to inspect the track. It's laborious work, and the harsh weather isn't helping. Unfortunately, such work can only be done at night. Track inspection is a precise process that requires specialized training. To make the grade, tracks must, amongst other things, display uniformity of width and level. Equipment is used to help crew ascertain track geometry, gauge measurement, super elevation, stationing, and chainage. Technicalities that translate into speed, safety, and comfort for high-speed rail passengers. Time is of the essence for track maintenance. With such a small window before the trains roll again, crews split up to cover more ground. Each time a high-speed train travels the line, the tracks and adjacent structures are subject to vibrations that can loosen nuts and bolts. If these land on the tracks, the consequences could be dire. This explains the degree of care and attention to detail with which these maintenance technicians carry out their nightly task. They also manually check the integrity of overhead cable structures. Where human lives are concerned, no detail is too small or innocuous. Nuts, bolts, fastenings, cables, every inch of track is thoroughly examined. It is 4.30 a.m. Maintenance is done for the night, and the first trains of the day can safely take to the tracks. The innovations of technology and efficiency aren't just visible in China's high-speed trains or the tracks they run on. At the Great Wall site, examples of efficient innovation have popped up in the construction process as well. Running the beijing Zhangjiakou Kou line beneath the Great Wall is only one challenging aspect of this project. The other 
are the obstacles Mother Nature has put before China's high-speed rail builders. Obstacles that need outside-the-box solutions. Solutions that can help them negotiate large tracts of land, vast bodies of water, and the onset of bone-chilling winter temperatures. This factory in Huailai County, China, turns out prefab 800-ton cement blocks needed to build viaducts for the high-speed rail's beijing Changjiakou line, the world's first intelligent railway. Chief Engineer Wang is in charge of production here. To facilitate more efficient construction, pop-up factories like this have sprung up where needed along the beijing Changjiakou line. Everything about this line is smart. Its entire ecosystem leverages on advanced technologies for efficiency, accuracy, and cost-effectiveness. With every detail computed with minute precision, 130 tons of cement are poured into 32-meter-long molds and left to harden. For 48 hours, the cement must be kept at a constant temperature and humidity to avoid cracking. The next challenge is moving these giant blocks. Mammoth machines transport these cement blocks to the actual construction site on the bridge. In in the construction of the Beijing Changjiakou line, the overcoming of one challenge only seems to lead to another. This time, it's something that's practically impossible for China's high speed rail builders to control the weather. With winter approaching, temperatures in Beijing will drop to less than minus 15 degrees Celsius. Engineers are rushing to complete construction of the Guanting Bridge, an important segment of the route, before the surface of the reservoir freezes over. Located about 100 kilometers from Beijing, Guanting Reservoir is a backup reservoir serving the capital city. To reduce the risk of pollution, sections of the bridge are assembled on shore, then pushed out across the water. The strong winds around the reservoir are perfect for a wind farm, but a nightmare for a bridge. Case in point, the 1940 collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in the USA. Strong winds caused excessive vibrations that twisted and snapped the structure like kindling. With over 60% of China's high-speed rail lines built across bridges, there is absolutely no room for error. 
Professor He and his team are recreating the conditions these bridges will be exposed to. Various wind conditions are simulated in the lab. Data captured is analyzed to give engineers clues on how to improve the stability of bridges. The pressure generated by a speeding train traveling in and out of a tunnel can also be a destructive force for the train, the tunnel, and the people living nearby. Studies on how to minimize the effects of shock waves generated in such situations are conducted at the Central South University Track Research Lab in Changsha. <laughs> When trains enter and leave a tunnel at nearly 400 kilometers an hour, micropressure waves are formed. These may cause the train to vibrate excessively resulting in damage or discomfort to passengers. The smallest change in the conditions within the tunnel can have magnified effects. Professor Liang's team recreate tunnel scenarios in the lab. They test how different tunnel shapes affect air pressure and how this in turn affects trains as they enter and exit a tunnel. They also study the effects of friction generated by two speeding trains that pass each other in a tunnel. No effort is being spared to ensure the beijing Changxia coal line is running smoothly and safely. Before the flames of the 24th Winter Olympics, begin burning in China. Futuristic travel for an ancient sporting spectacle. It's another day in China, and four million passengers begin their daily commute. Orchestrating rail operations in the greater Beijing area are those who work in the Beijing control station. Hundreds of pairs of eyes, banks of CCTV cameras and computers monitor train movements, track switching and station operations. Should an emergency situation arise, instructions are relayed in real time to train drivers. It's been reported that during peak periods like Chinese New Year, dispatchers here are responsible for the safe passage of some 55 million people. They also work to mitigate the effects of severe weather conditions. Uh,自然灾害这一块,我们最常见的啊,平时调度指挥方面经常遇到的,一个是就是这个大风,这个是降雨。China's high-speed rail network is expanding, and demand for rail sector professionals is growing, starting with those who are at the helm of high-speed trains. Two, 
This school is run with military-like discipline, reflecting the heavy responsibility the job they're training for comes with. The lives of high-speed rail passengers lie in their hands. Wuhan High-Speed Training Center is China's only centralized academy for high-speed train drivers. Fifteen simulators here, each costing 33 million US dollars, prepares drivers for any contingency. In addition to preparing trainees as train drivers, rail management and track and electrical cable maintenance courses are also offered. Before embarking on the five-year high-speed train drivers course, students must already have two years of experience at the helm of a regular train. Seven thousand students graduate every year. To keep abreast with advancements in the high-speed rail industry, Wuhan High Speed Training Center constantly upgrades its facilities and upskills its instructors, so they are always on the cutting edge. China has built the world's largest high-speed rail network. It's already changed how people live, work, and play. From train design and engineering studios to laboratories and research facilities. From mega factories and construction sites to training centers. From ensuring every minute piece of the system is in place to overseeing the entire daily operations of the network. Every effort is taken with one clear focus to create a 21st century marvel in an ancient land and to do it fast.